This is a podcast of the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Simon Draper tells us about his progress in malaria vaccine research. Hi Simon. Hi. Why is it proving such a challenge to develop a vaccine against malaria? Well I think that there are a number of reasons why it's it's proved so challenging. Um, Most of the vaccines that we have already are based on bacteria and viruses and and in the past they've proved relatively successful. Uh, Malaria is actually caused by uh, a parasite called plasmodium and, and the parasite is a a highly evolved and, and complex organism. Um, it's also a, a master of disguise. It, it changes its appearance at each step of the infectious process in the body. So that's one of the reasons why it's proved very challenging. Um, I think one of the others is, is that, that the classical way of making a vaccine is to take the whole organism, um, the whole bacterium or the virus, and to inactivate it and to inject that as your vaccine. Um, that can be done for malaria. Um, we can do that experimentally. Um, but it's, it's been very hard to deploy that into, into a product. Um, it's actually even hard to grow the parasites in the lab. Um, so, so that's not been possible, and it's actually been challenging for scientists to find other ways of inducing protective responses. Is there an Achilles heel in the malaria parasite? Achilles heels are really the, the, the holy grails of research. You, you could define them as a, a function of, of, of the parasite that's absolutely critical um, to its survival. Um, They're they're traditionally quite hard to find, but it doesn't mean they're not there if you don't look hard enough. Um, My group actually works on vaccines that try to kill the parasite um, in the blood. So when the parasite's replicating in in someone's bloodstream, um, that's when they become sick. And and, and very recently, a a pathway's been described that appears to be essential for the parasite to get inside a red blood cell. And, And what we've shown is that antibodies against that pathway um, can, can neutralise that process um, and it neutralises all, all strains of, of, of malaria parasite. Um, so that's a very exciting result, it's, it's very promising um, and would represent an Achilles heel, so to speak. And what is the next step now? So our group is, is very much focused on, on translational research. Um, we, we aim to take our most promising candidates from, from the laboratory and into the clinic. So what we'll look to do now is, is manufacture that vaccine as, as clinical grade material and then we'll aim to do a a series of of proof of concept clinical trials. Um, So we'll we'll vaccinate healthy adult volunteers here in Oxford. Um, And first of all, we'll look at the safety of the vaccine. And then after that, we'll look at the immune responses induced by the vaccine and primarily the antibody responses. Um, And if those are looking good and, and, and they appear to kill the parasite in our experiments in the laboratory, we would then go on to see if the vaccine is actually efficacious and whether it could uh, kill malaria parasites in in, in the blood. What are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five to ten years? I think there's there's always a lot of lines of exciting research. Um, I think one of of the most exciting has has been the expansion in in genetics and and genomics. So in the last ten years, um, the the malaria parasite genome was, was published. And that revealed the parasite has over 5,000 different genes. Um, Now, all of those encode uh, a different protein. And and in the past, only a a small handful, maybe 10 to 15, have been tested as vaccine candidates. So there's certainly uh, a lot of exciting work to come in the future, testing all those new possible proteins that have come from the genome. Um, I think one of the other exciting areas has been the the improvement in in vaccine technologies. Um, So the, the technologies that we have today are actually capable of inducing immune responses that are, are, are much stronger than anything we've seen, we've seen in the past. And that's both for, for antibodies um, and T cell or our white blood cell responses. Um, so that's all looking extremely promising in terms of future vaccine development. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Why do I think it's important? I, I think there's a number of reasons. Um, first of all, Malaria continues to exert a huge burden on global public health. It affects um, hundreds of millions of people every year um, and leads to the death of just under a million individuals, primarily children under the age of five years in the developing world. Um, so I think, I think we have a humanitarian obligation to try and do something about that. Um, if, also, if you, if you look throughout history, vaccines have, have made a huge impact in terms of reducing the burden of infectious diseases. Um, and they're highly cost effective. So I think they're certainly very worthwhile developing. Um, 
and I think maybe a final reason is that we're fairly fortunate in malaria. We know that we know that you can juice induce immunity to, to the parasite. Um, we can do that experimentally, um, and after many years of exposure in the field, people become naturally immune. So, so we know it can be done. It's just been a challenge to to uh, develop a, a vaccine and a vial that you can then use to vaccinate people. Um, but just because something's difficult, I don't think we should give up. I think it's, it's very important that we keep trying. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? My group is, is within the, the Jenner Institute, which is the vaccine department of the university, and, and there we work on a, a wide range of difficult infectious diseases. Um, as a group, we uh, focus on the development of vaccines that induce antibody responses, um, and a lot of the, the, the technologies and, and, and vaccine um, delivery platforms that we've developed have actually uh, now been used against other viral and, and bacterial diseases. So I think it's important within the department that people can learn from what we've developed just as much as we can learn from what the other groups are doing. Um, I think one of the other important aspects is that we're very much focused on translational research. We want to take our best vaccine candidates from the laboratory and into the clinic um, and, and undertaking um, clinical trials of the, the most promising approaches is certainly a very important aspect of doing translational medicine. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much.